Well, welcome back to the Culture Base Podcast, where we help leaders know what they're about, show where they're going, and build scalable teams to get them there. I'm Dustin. He's Blake. Happy July. We made it. Ooh, 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 ooh. Freedom Week in the good old U.S. of A. Mm. 1776, back-to-back World War champs. What's up? <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? Mm. America. Uh yeah, so last week we did an acronym. We're back at it this week. We promised mm-hmm. you with another acronym. And I just want to say real quick, personally, from me to Blake and for all of you to watch and listen, happy 50th episode, bud. Yes, that's awesome. I didn't realize oh. that. I yeah, probably you, paid it more attention. It's all good. It's all good. Actually, we didn't talk about this, but I'm just going to go ahead and say it on air so you have to say yes to it. But next week... We are going to do a look back on our first 50 episodes and some of the things that we've learned so far. A little uh, celebratory episode. Episode 51, we'll be looking at our first 50. So, feels okay. good. Feels good to get 50 and we're almost a full year into this. Well, technically, we've taken some weeks off, so we have been over a full year. But a full 52 weeks would be a full year. But 50 just seems more celebratory than 52 no one goes yay i'm 52 and they go yay i'm 50 well they probably don't even say yay they're probably like dang it i'm 50 but <laughs> <laughs> but we're celebrating it because it's a good round number and doggone it people like us <laughs> uh yeah so today we're going to get into another acronym having the will it's in all caps for a reason folks to work so uh, when we look at building scalable teams, it's not enough to have the right people with the clarity on vision. You also need them to have, uh, you also need them to uh, be connected to the right work or what we call the will. Uh, and given how much we love acronyms at the culture base, our simple framework for connecting your team to the work is spelled out in the word will, W I L L. I know sometimes my Southern accent sounds like I'm saying wheel, but it's will. W I L L. If it sounds like I'm saying will at any point, just, just interrupt me and go will. Um, today we'll, or we will walk through this simple acronym for you and your team to stay connected to the right work. Woo. You got on it, Blake. What's your take on this topic? Oh boy. Um, Pay attention. (laughs) No, I was, I was actually looking for an acronym for okay. the word acronym that makes fun of acronyms. Ooh, God. Yeah. And if we can get the corner on that market. Annoyingly maybe. convoluted references, overwhelming normal yarns manufactured. <laughs> normal. <laughs> it was good until I got to normal yarns manufactured. The one I had before it was better. It was abbreviations, confusing, really obscure nomenclature, yield madness. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's way better. I don't know what the, what the yeah. normal yarn manufacturing means, but yeah. My uh, one of our guys on our team, we, we come up with acronyms for everything, right? Of course. And he always he always talks about uh, he's like you guys and your TLAs, and we're like TLAs. He goes three little acronyms. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm using that. I'm I using know. That. <laughs> most acronyms you spell out, I either have to get, go like this, <laughs> pretending that I know what it means. Or I have to go raise my hand and go, I need you to break that one down for me there, bud. Yeah. Oh, anyway, we so love anyway, it. Anyway, I was just being stupid looking for an acronym that makes fun of acronyms for the word acronym. I so. love stupidity. It's my favorite. Yeah, me too. We're good, we're good friends. But when we're talking about this episode and about the will to work, I think when we think if somebody is connected to work, we... And and whether it's the right work for them, it's so easy, very similar to the way when people talk about experience, all they a lot of times have is that one variable for experience, which tends to be time. And that's it. Like how long have they existed in it? Therefore, their experience, which isn't true. And so I think whether somebody is connected to the work that they're in, Really, you have to hit those different areas to make sure you have more than one variable that isn't just like, well, they're connected to work because I pay them well. Well, yep. that's not true. They stay because you're paying them well. And that may not last, right? So what are the things that actually connect someone to the work, whether they do the work well, whether they do it enthusiastically, whether they give their best or just give their time, 
like, or a little bit of their best, like all those different variables is really what we dive into here. So as we get into this, you know, we, we talk about this acronym will, right. And it's really the push, the right work that they're connected to. And, uh, we hit the want, the instinct, the love and the leverage. And so as we get into this, I think it's important that we understand it at that high level. Are there more variables? Yes, but they don't fit in our acronym well. So mm. they're going to have to be peripheral ones. And I feel like these actually are the heart of what we're trying to capture. Yeah. So just to give it some context here, when we talk about the scalable teams and our scalability assessment that we walk our clients through, this acronym WILL is the second piece of the baseline equation. And that baseline equation is the right people connected to the right work with the right clarity on purpose. And so last week we talked about that right clarity on purpose. That's the vision piece. Yeah. Uh, and this week we're talking about that right connected to the right work, which is the will. So like Blake said, W is for want, I is for instinct, uh, L is for love, and the other L is for leverage. Mm -hmm. So let's get into it with the first letter W, the want. How badly do they want it? I don't think it was Jason Aldean or somebody that sang that song. How bad do you want it? Um, and every time I think about the phrase, how bad do you want it? That's where my mind goes. Mm. Um, I should listen to that song more. Anyway, you should be asking uh, yourself and your team, especially this is, I think this really Blake comes into play. Uh, all of these in this acronym today really comes into play in the uh, kind of attraction onboarding hiring process where you're really kind of, this is where you really want to start to identify these things. And so when you're interviewing somebody and we, we've talked about, you know, interview questions and we're going to have a free PDF of those interview questions for you on our website soon. But when you're do when you're asking these questions, it's not the questions. It's not about the questions, right? It's about the answers that you're listening for. And so, if maybe you even have somebody on your team right now that might be a little displaced, and you need to, you're like, I know this person's a good fit for our team, but it might not be here. It's probably because they don't want it as much as other people want it. Hmm. Want the position, and when we say it, we mean the position. We mean. Uh, the, the, the vision before you, the goal, like, what are we doing here? So do they want it, Blake? Yeah. And I, I actually think wanting it has a lot to do because their position is like connected to the mission. And so mm -hmm. I think want it actually has a lot more to do with the, how you do something. Like mm -hmm. to me, the vision is where we're going. Mission right. is how we get there. Right? right. And so when you think about because there's a big difference between want the want and the love, like the passion point. Yeah. These, like otherwise, we have two of the same words for the same <laughs> thing, and then we're just trying to fill the acronym. But want That's and not I think how acronyms work. I, we don't play that way no. at the culture base. We don't do that. <laughs> want it has to do with the mission, and so I think it's like, do they feel like you know what I fit the mechanism to make the vision happen? And yeah. if they don't, they're like, ah, oh, you know, I don't really fit. I don't really want to do this. I don't enjoy any aspect of what we're trying to do to mm. get there. I'd rather just be there. Why can't I just be at Disneyland and, and I, I don't want to have to drive there or fly there. I just want to be there. Like, right. So it's a miss. Yeah. Um, and at, at this level, we're, we're talking about being connected to the work in the right way, uh, connected to the right work not just in the job sense. Like there are phases of your yeah. life where you just need a J-O-B and you need a paycheck. Yep. Right. J-O-B, another acronym. Uh, I don't know if that, <laughs> I don't know if we can come up, if you can come up with one while I'm talking, that'd be great. Uh, but what we're talking about here now is we're, we're, we're past J-O-B mode and now we're in career mode. Right. And so the career, this is no longer child's play, right? Like I have a 13 year old son. He's going to be 14 this year. Our local Chick-fil-A will hire him at 14 years old. So he wants a J-O-B. Mm -hmm. Do I think he could go far in the company because Chick-fil-A is awesome? Maybe. Do I want him uh, to have another career path? Yes. Either mm -hmm. way, it's a J-O-B for him at 14 years old, but more, more than likely you're dealing with people who, uh, 
who are later in life and need uh, more of a career path and not a job path. And that's where I really think connected to the right work matters the most. And so you'd be like, hey, man, I just need a body to sit in this chair and staple staples all day. Yeah. But if you connect, it's like the janitor story that we always tell with Disney, right? Like the yep. janitor's connected to the right work because he understands the bigger purpose. He understands the mission and how the mission is connected to making his mission of that role, right, is mm-hmm. connected to making the vision happen. Yeah, J-O-B, just outstanding boredom. <laughs> <laughs> That's all it is. That's just outstanding all boredom. Is. <laughs> just outstanding boredom. Just outstanding boredom. Which you're paid for. I love it. That's right. That is right. Um, right. Anything else I want before we move to the second letter? Nope. Perfect. Second letter, I, if you know how to spell the word will, it's spelled mm-hmm. W and then I is the second letter. The spelling lessons with the culture base. I stands for instinct in this acronym. Instinct. And this is where we often talk about, Blake, you know, do they get it, want it, have the capacity to do it? You're going to see a little bit of that in our acronym today. Obviously, we already talked about do they want it. Mm-hmm. Instinct for us is do they get it? Right. Mm -hmm. Do they actually understand? Do they have the capability, the natural capability to perform this role? They might not have all the technical skill that you need them to have yet. That's okay. We can train them in that. Right. Mm -hmm. But do they have the natural instincts that it's going to take to make this work? Like if you don't be like if you're hiring a project manager and they're not a very forward thinking person, even they may know your project management software. They're Mm going to suck at that job and they're going to hate it. Because in order to have a really good project manager, you need someone who is very forward thinking naturally as like in their personality, right? It's their instinct that they're forward thinking. Yeah. And I'm going to oversimplify this, but if somebody was like washing a car and that was their job Mm. and they were like, you know, it's just a lot easier to dry the car first because I feel like I get all the wet spots off at that point. And you're like, what you you're missing how the car wash works. <laughs> Do you got to put it in this order? And, and I think that's where the instinct of getting it is that you can see the pieces fit together the way they're supposed to fit together. And that's different in different processes and different processes connect to different people's mindsets. So it's how the mind works in a lot of ways where they go, Oh, I see how this connects. Hey, I wonder if, and it's not just how it works now, but I wonder if as we grow, that's going to adjust to this and we're going to yeah. need these pieces. That's an in- instinct you're looking for. It yeah. and, and especially as you're talking to people, because a lot of this, what we're talking about is identifying it in interviews and to see whether people are going to be these people or in coaching calls to see if they can be coached to certain levels. But it's to ask like, hey, if this is how something is in a, a process, how do you think you could evolve this process? Hmm. And just let them work through it and ask them different types of processes that are very like everyone knows them. But like, how could you evolve making a peanut butter and jelly sandwich? Tell Hmm. me how you could evolve that. Yeah. And And some people go ahead. I was going to say, I'll say too something interesting. I think a couple of these parts of the acronym All of the parts of the acronym are applicable to onboarding someone new. But I think there are a couple parts of this acronym that would be worth looking at with your current people and the current role that they're in. Uh, Like instinct, probably not going to change a ton. It may grow. There may have better instinct over time, right? As they've been around it, they have reps, right? Uh, Want also can change a little bit, but there are some things here at the end of the day that you're just going, you know, it's just slightly misaligned. Let's yep. get you, we love having you on this team, but let's get you into a role that more, that fits your, your natural instinct a bit better because then you'll thrive, we'll thrive, everybody will be happier. Yeah. And that's, you hear this even in EOS talk about right, right person, right seat, mm-hmm. right. And it's finding the right seat for somebody. That's right. Um, that's and right. yeah, you're right. Like with instinct, the most you're really going to get that continues to grow is like iterative instinct where they start understanding something to another level and then they start kind of building upon that. But yeah, so that's what I'd probably say about instinct is just that like it hits what entails now, but also in evolution of what it's going to entail later. Right. So that brings us to our first L. We got the W is want, I is instinct, and the first L is love. And this is where we're talking more, Blake, about are they passionate for the work? Slightly different than do they want it, right? Like Mm -hmm. I could want something, um, but not be super passionate about it. Thus, my desire to go get it 
it's kind of meh. Yeah. Right. Like I would, if you say, Hey, do you want a toilet made of gold? Uh, sure. I mean, I'll take one, yeah. but I'm not super passionate about going out and getting one. Nope. You know what I mean, like if it's mm-hmm. offered to me, sure. I'll take it. It's a great yeah. conversation piece, yeah. but like, <laughs> I don't really, there's no passion in there. It's just like, you know, my number one goal in life is to have a toilet of gold or a toilet made of gold. Yeah. You know, no, it's I, like, I get there, that. There's yeah. a difference there between wanting something and being passionate about something. It's a silly, yep. stupid illustration, but that's what we do here. We're full of silly, stupid illustrations so that you can understand this better. <laughs> Blake, <laughs> not the audience, so that Blake can understand it better. Yeah, thank you. Thank so, you. I'm sorry. I'm um, talking down to the audience. I'm, yeah, I'm, for sure. Okay. This is also where, like in the love and the passion, I think this is a bigger meta thing where we're talking about the vision where the want had so much to do with the mission of how to bring the vision about the yeah. want it or the love is really connected to the vision. And so this is where, especially a lot of Gen Z's and millennials are very connected to like just causes and stuff and how it feels like companies have to be like, have a political lean towards things or actively care about something. And, and I don't think you have, I think our natural tendency is to have political leans within a company which tends to create that. But I think if you're really observant of your culture, you can actually go in and be like, what do we deeply care about? We care about people being connected to things. We care about people evolving to the next best version of themselves. And so when you start creating those causes and those things for people to connect to, um, one right now that's heavy in our company is innovation. Our team loves innovation. And they're really creating like this standard of like, our core value, you know, is that we're barrier breakers in the electrical industry, right? But that is innovative. And so people are mm. connecting to that at such a level. Well, if somebody's like, I just want to come in and clock in and clock out, they're not going to love the vision. They're going to think innovation actually is a, is kind of standing in the way of them being able to just do what they want to do. Um, and some people, like, if somebody was like, you know what, what we do as a company is we kill ants, that's maybe hard for a lot of people to be like, I'm about that. I'm about killing <laughs> ants. But you might have some people who are like, you know what? Like I remember growing up and we had the worst ant infestation and it drove us all so crazy that we were constantly fighting with one another. We were so irritated. Who left this apple core here? You know, you had those moments and you're like losing it. All of a sudden, you have something with passion, right? With this thing to connect that to. (laughs) I've lost Dustin. You have something to connect that to. And now it's a bigger thing. It's about like keeping families together. (laughs) You know, now it's not about ants. This is keeping families together. So I think that the people who can connect their passion to what they do, they, they connect it through other things. Not just, I love electricity. I don't. Guys, I'm not Ben Franklin. Like I don't have that same drive about electricity that he does, but I do about creating and helping develop good people and good systems and innovation. Yeah. It's the next, it's, it's, it's beyond the surface level of the love for it. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Like you're like, Hey, I just love electricity. I think currents are super cool. Yeah. But next level deep from that in the electrical industry for you, right, Blake, is about connecting, is about connecting, connecting pieces, connecting people, yeah. right? It's also about like, hey, I get to create some really cool in- infrastructure for some really cool environments. And I get to walk into certain facilities with my kids and go, dad's company wired this place up. Yep. And then, yeah. I mean, there's a sense of pride to it, right? I think that comes with a love. Uh, here is that there's a sense of pride uh, in your work. And yep. does this person uh, in this particular role take a sense of pride in their work? And it just might, it might not be a bad fit for your organization. It might just be a bad fit for the role. I really want to emphasize that because I think so many times people are quick to let people go, mm-hmm. increases their turnover rate, makes the, makes the culture worse, right? They're quick to let them go because they think, oh, they're not going to they just don't, they don't get it. They're not, this, this is, they're not material for this. And it might just be that position that they just don't love. Maybe they used to love it. They don't love it anymore. So it's time to shift. If they're a good fit for your company, you can always find a place for good people. So that's what I have to say about that. <laughs> good. <laughs> okay. good. I think, I think also some of the passion does 
not just connect to like the big whole of the company. Sometimes people's passion is for parts, right? Mm -hmm. And sometimes I think we try to pull because someone's passionate about something. We interpret that as they're going to be passionate about everything. And sometimes yeah. I think we, we hurt someone's good, like right work with the will, the right work. We, we pull them out of the right work to push them into more responsibility instead of, man, they, they love this aspect of the role because they're so good at it. They, they've been able to innovate in those things and they love that. They don't want the whole. Some people love the whole of the animal, the whole of the mechanism, and don't love all the little parts. And I think being able to identify that's helpful too. So, so far, Blake, in this acronym, we've kind of hit on some, I'm not going to say non-tangibles, but we've kind of hit on some like more emotions or mental type of uh, mm-hmm. categories, right? But this last L, so we've got the want, the instinct, and the love. The last L is the leverage. To me, this is where it shifts a little bit more into the kind of the practical, tactical, physical realm yep. of like, but can you actually do the thing? Do you have, what we say here is, do you have the natural capacity to carry out all that is being asked of you or it, will it be a constant struggle for you? Yeah. Will, will, do, is, is everybody has just kind of like certain different levels like certain different size tanks of leverage that they have. You might look at me and Blake and go, well, Dustin's a lot bigger. He obviously has a lot bigger tank, right? No, Blake's leverage tank is so much larger than mine. He's like the person that gets like four hours of sleep and is up at 4 a.m. and goes to bed at midnight or whatever. I don't know what's going on. There's a He has a lot of natural capacity more than I do. And that's okay. It's just a different thing. And so I think for us to be able to understand and look at the person and go, okay, if this job is asking, you know, X amount of you, but you only have mm. the letter M amount to give on a natural, regular occurring day without the help of Red Bulls, you know, or, or Monster Energy drinks or anything like that, what's your natural capacity? And this particular role may not be the one for you. Yeah, I think of capacity, like natural capacity to be like, playing Madden or something like that. When you have the player build out of their speed, their mm. agility, their um, strength, their whatever else, like all those different things and how you have these players who are really strong in one area or weaker in others, like that natural capacity is that. And some roles and jobs and responsibilities require a certain capacity to be at a certain level. Um, and so I think as you go through trying to figure out what is my capacity, there are certain, like for an electrician, there is a certain level of spatial visualization that I need to see they're good at. And if they don't hit this certain level, they may fit our culture. In fact, our turnover that we have had has not been necessarily because of they don't fit the culture. It's because they don't fit the work. And yeah. it's a, it's a, uh, a kindness to not hire them. If they're not going to fit any aspect of your company, it is a kindness not to, because be they're not going to fit it. They're going to connect to the people. They're not going to enjoy the work and they're going to feel stuck. We don't want people feeling stuck. Stuck is the worst. I would rather them be pissed than feel stuck. Okay. So when that gets there, that's where you go. You don't, you don't fit that Madden level, right? Like even, for example, a receiver has all these different things and they look like, oh man, they score a 97. How are they at center? Not great. Okay. Yeah. This puny little guy playing center and gets tossed from some defensive guy just walking through. Right. So yeah. this is where understanding the capacity level and their natural capacity, are they able to grow to that point? And that's, that's, hard. There's some relativity to that of whether they can or can't. And, but I think sometimes our cognitive stuff is if it's so low, like, I think you might get a, a three point growth in one direction or another, but I don't think you're getting a 12 point growth because we've mm. kind of gotten to a certain place over time and our brains have gotten to a certain place too. So yeah. uh, that's where cognitive assessments are really helpful and not just personality assessments. This is where we got to be little more careful. I think this is cognitive assessments. You're trying to see, will their brain and what they enjoy doing and are they task oriented or people oriented? That matters. Okay. Mm -hmm. If they're people oriented and you're throwing them into pushing this button over and over all day long and they never see another soul, 
probably not a great idea. Yeah. 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 I mean, I think we've, we've kind of hit all of these to the, uh, you know, to the max. I think everybody understands now what we're talking about here when we say connecting them to the right work is the want, the instinct, the love and the leverage. That's the will. Right. So, uh, any final thoughts here on, uh, connecting people or having the, the will to work Blake, uh, before we, this episode, I would just say that this is, it's very easy to look at something like this and be like, yeah, we do that. Hmm. But if you don't have an intentionality backing that or some kind of system, that's it. You're missing it. Okay. And you don't have it. And so that intentionality, I would say, create that intentionality. If you're like, I don't know how to do that. Hit us up. We'll help you create that intentionality. Yeah. Everything at the culture base that we're, that we're hopefully inspiring you to do is active intentionality. Yeah. It's not passive. You can be like, oh, yeah, yeah, we're intentional about that. Well, show me the plan of what you're doing this week or today. Yeah. You know, <laughs> to get yeah. to that to get to that level. And, to, and to if execute. you say that plan's up here in my head, nah. then you don't have a plan. Hard pass. Yep. Hard pass. Because if you die tomorrow, that plan dies with you. Yep. So uh, we can go on a whole tangent about that. But that's it for this episode. I want to remind you, you can find us uh, on uh, online at theculturebase.com. Blake said uh, earlier, you know, if you want us to help you with some of this stuff, we would love to. You can go to theculturebase.com and click on uh, the strategy button there. We would love to uh, talk with you about that. We have some cool free new resources coming. We're working on, can I just say we're working on an ebook? Can I say that? <sighs> ebook, no. y'all. No, you can't. We're not. We're not doing that. <laughs> I lied to you just then. No, we are. Or are, or are we? Tune in next time to find out. Um, Next week, we're going to be back with episode 51. What we learned in our first 50 episodes, a.k.a. an honest conversation about the future of the culture base. So we're going to look back a little bit. We're also going to look forward a little bit. And we look forward to seeing you then. Peace. Peace.